Good day. Welcome to My Zone Online School. My name is Mrs. Pinar. The lessons I'm presenting is Mathematics for Grade 7. Welcome, Pomweni. Please remember to always sanitize, keep your social distance, and please remember to wear your masks. Today's lesson is factors. The learning objective for today is no factors and their properties. Our competencies are no factors of a given number smaller than a hundred and find the highest common factor of two whole numbers. We are busy on page 13. What is a factor? Factors are numbers that can divide into a number without leaving a remainder. So a factor is a number that we can divide into a number without leaving a remainder. Let's look at an example. If we take 12 and we need to find the factors of 12. 1 divide into 12 12 times. So 1 is a factor of 12 as well as 12 is a factor of 12. 2 can divide into 12 6 times. So both 2 and 6 are factors of 12. We divide 3 into 12. 3 divide into 12 4 times. No other number can divide into 12 without a remainder. So what are the factors of 12? And usually we write it in an order. So the factors of 12 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Factors are numbers that can divide into a number without leaving a remainder. For example, if you are asked to write down the factors of 24, which numbers can be divided into 24 without leaving a remainder? 1 divided into 24, 24 times. So 1 as well as 24 are factors of 24. 2 divided into 24, 12 times. So 2 and 12 are factors of 24. 3 divided into 12, 8 times. And 4 can divide into 12, uh, into 24, 6 times. So if I have to write the factors of 24, <coughs> I write them in an order. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24 are all factors of 24. Because these numbers can be divided into 24 without a remainder. If you have to, div if you have to divide or to find the factors of 48, which are the numbers that can divide into 48 without leaving a remainder. The list is there in front of you. Number 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48. They are all factors of 48. Why? Because if I divide those numbers into 48, they can divide into 48 without leaving a remainder. Number three 
On page 13, number 3, if you are asked to write down all the factors of 50, you will find that the factors of 50 is 1, 2, 5, 10, 25, and 50. That is how we find factors. Now, our other competency says we need to determine the highest common factor of two whole numbers. Now, first of all, what is the highest common factor? I've explained to you how to find the factors. What is common? Common is a number or are numbers that is found in both sets. And highest is the biggest number. So if we have to take an example of the factors of 12 and the factors of 18, we will find, we make the list of the factors of 12, which is 1, 2, 3, 6, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And the factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. The common factors, the numbers that we have, can find in both those numbers, if we have to determine their factors, will be 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now, what is the highest common fa fraction then? Uh, the highest common factor, uh, meaning the biggest number that we find in both sets is 6. So in this case, 6 will be our highest common fraction factor, or HCF. On page 14, we will find some examples. Those examples I will explain on the board now. Let's go to the board. And from when is here to assist me? So the first example, we have find the factors of 12 and 18. So my two numbers that I'm going to use is 12 and 18. We will write the factors of 12 first. From when? The factors of 12, meaning the numbers that I can divide into 12 without leaving a remainder. Can you assist me? What are the factors of 12? He says 1. 1 divided into 12, how many times? 12 times. 12 times. So 1 will be a factor of 12 and 12 will also be a factor of 12. Are there other factors of 12? Which other numbers can I divide into 12 without leaving a remainder? Two. He says 2. 2 divided into 12, how many times? 6. 6 times. So 2 as well as 6 are factors of 12. Any other numbers that can divide into 12? Without leaving a remainder? Three. He says three. Three divided into twelve, how many times? Four times. Four times. Are there any other numbers that we that we can divide into twelve without leaving a remainder? Four. We have four there because three divided into twelve four times. We have six here because two divided into twelve six times. Look at the list. We have 1 divided into 12, 12 times. So 1 and 12 are factors. 2 divided into 12, 6 times. So 2 and 6 are factors. 3 divided into 12, 4 times. So 3 and 4 are both factors. Do you agree? Yes. All right. So now we are going to take these factors and we are going to write them in order. So we have 1, we have 2, we have 3, we have 4, 6, and 12. So that is the list of all the factors of 12. Let's continue with 18. 
What are the factors of 18? Would you like to assist me? The factors of 18? Right. 1 divided into 18, how many times? 18 times. Okay, so 1 and 18 are both factors of 18. Any other factors? He says 2. 2 divided into 18, how many times? 9 times. 9 times. So 2 and 9 are both factors of 18. Any other numbers? 3. 3. Divide into 18 how many times? Six times. Six times. Any other number? No. So there are no more numbers that can divide into 18 without leaving a remainder. Yes. Right. He says yes. So now that we have found the factors of 18, let's put them in order. So we have one. Two, three, six, nine, and eighteen. So on the board, we will find the factors of twelve and the factors of eighteen. Now we need to find the common factors. Common meaning the numbers or the factors that we have find can that we can find in both of these sets how many look at my at our factors that we have found can you give me the common factors one. he says one because we have a one day and we have a one day two, two are in both sets Three, three we find in both sets. Six, we find in both sets. Any other number? No. Right. So, what do we see? The common factors are one, two, three, and six. Now we have to find the highest common factor, meaning the biggest number. For many, assist me here. One, two, three, and six. Which one will be our highest common factor? Six. Do you agree? Yes. Thank you. One more example. One last example. For many, are you ready? Right. Our last example is we need to find the factors of 24 and 36. So first we're going to write the factors of 24 and then we will write the factors of 36. Are you ready, my child? Right. Let's start with 24. What are the factors of 24? Factors are numbers that we divide into a number without leaving a remainder. Which number can divide into 24 without a remainder? One. One. And one divided into 24? 24. 24 times. Meaning one as well as 24 are both factors of 24. Any other numbers that can divide into 24 without leaving a remainder? Two. Two, Two divided into 24? Twelve. Twelve times. So two as well as 24. Ach, two as well as 12 are factors of 24. Any other numbers? Three. Three. Three divided into 24? How many times? Eight. Eight times, right? Right. Any other number? Four. Four. Four divided into 24? Six times. Six times. That's the lot, eh? 
Right, do you agree? Yes. Right, so what should we do now? What is our next step? We put them in order. We have one, we have two, we have three, four, six, eight, twelve, and twenty. Four. Right. So our next number that we need to find the factors of is 36. Any number that can divide into 36 without leaving a remainder? One. One, One divide into 36. How many times? 36 times. So one as well as 36 are factors of 36. Any other numbers? Three. And two? Two. two. Divide into 36 how many times? 18. 18 times. Yes, yes. Clever boy. And three? Three divide into 36 12 times. Any other number? Four, four divided into 36? Nine times. Nine times. Correct, correct. Are there any more numbers? Mm. Hmm? No. No. So what is our next step now? We put them in order. We have left out one number. from when you have me here. Six. Six divided into 36? Six times. Six times. So we only write it once. So what are the factors of 36? One, One two, two, three, three four, four, six, six nine, nine, twelve, twelve eighteen, eighteen, and thirty-six. Right. So now we have found the factors, we have put them in order, and our next step is now to find the common factors. What are common factors? The numbers that we find in both sets. Assess me for one. One, we find in both sets. Two, Two we find in both sets. Three, four, six, six. no more numbers, twelve, twelve, that's a lot. Now we have to find the highest common factor. We have found the common factors, the highest meaning the biggest number that we find in both sets. Which one is that one? 12. So do you agree that 12 is our highest common factor? We continue on page 14. After your examples, you will find your activities. We will go through the activities quickly. The first one says, write down all the factors of 27. What are factors again? The numbers that you can divide into 27 without leaving a remainder. Number two, write down all the factors of 35. So you need to find all the numbers that can divide into 35 without leaving a remainder. Number three, write down all the factors of 72. Number four, write down all the factors of 84. Number five, you have to write down all the factors of 99. B. 
Complete the tables. Use the numbers 9 and 21. Find all the factors of 9 and then all the factors of 21. Then you have to discover all the common factors. And lastly, you have to find the highest common factor. The same in number 2. Now you use the numbers 45 and 54. Find the factors of those two numbers. Discover all the common factors. And lastly, find the highest common factor. Remember to always sanitize. Keep your social distance. Keep on wearing your masks and please watch our lessons on uh, online, my zone online school. Hi everyone, my name is Shashi. I'm back. And you can always stay active throughout the lockdown. Uh, you can play with your friends, but keep your distance. Like me and my friend. Yay! And you can also jog and sing to be active. Until next time. Bye! Souls, this is Nikita Winkler and I'm here to share easy tools for stretching that you can do just about anywhere. This is a demonstration so what's most important is that you take the time that your body requires to release the tension that you have. So let's get started. In this session we will be using all the tools you have and all the tools you need to give yourself a neck massage, a neck and so shoulder massage. So first, I'm going to cup my fingers and I'm going to go to the front of the neck and I'm going to draw lines down and the massage up, down, whatever feels good. If you feel the tension, dig into it. I'm going to go to the back of the neck now using four fingers. And you can draw lines from the bottom up or you can go all the way into the shoulder blades drawing all that tension up and last but not least using the thumb especially this part of the thumb to dig into the head the base of the skull. Create circular movement or line. Go where you find the tension and continue getting, just giving your head some pressure. And wow, you're gonna feel so much more alive once you give yourself a massage. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Don't forget to breathe and happy stretching.
song goes Benjamin Rosloff expresses himself with music, but when he's not playing the cello, he's making films. My father bought me my first camera when I was 14 years old. My biggest dream is to be a filmmaker, like a producer or director. Benjamin has already shown his films at festivals around the world. The first film that I did, which was a documentary short, was called Can I Call You? It's about me trying to go on a relationship with someone who's not disabled. Can I call you? Yes. <laughs> Ben is indeed a remarkable young man who has been living with autism from birth. He's a 23-year-old living in New York with his parents. Ben is not alone. One percent of the world's population, over 70 million people, is living with autism. Some would refuse to let autistic people go to regular schools and parents fight about that. That's why it's important to see like videos about their lives. Like, even though they're disabled, there's things that they can do. Benjamin has just landed a job as an intern at New York City's mayor's office for people with disabilities. Ben and his supervisor, Jonathan Novick, produce films to highlight people with disabilities who work for the municipality. Ben, Ben's a lot of things. Ben is positive. Ben is friendly. He brings this, this very high level of energy and enthusiasm into his work. I work here as cameraman and editor. I travel with Jonathan Novick, and together we meet like people with different disabilities and like I do the recording on camera while Jonathan Novick does the interview. Randy Washington, who's working with Ben, helps keep him focused and on track. Watching films is one of Ben's favorite things in life, and Randy is really impressed with Ben's encyclopedic knowledge. It's amazing the, the stuff he remembers from the movies, and he, he's hardworking. When given a task, wants to complete that task. Well, I guess it would be he's a perfectionist. Recently, Ben contacted the United Nations and was invited to visit the organization. Today, he's going to interview the Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon. Ben could have never imagined that one day he would have the opportunity to discuss with the UN Secretary General the pressing issues that affect billions of people worldwide. Last December in Paris, the world leaders came and showed their commitment to keep global temperature rise below 2 degrees, if possible 1.5 degrees. Under this agreement, we can cut emissions. Among the questions Ben asked, one was very close to his heart. Why is autism an issue for the United Nations? Some societies discriminate on or shun uh, people with autism. This is a terrible uh, violation of uh, human rights. The United Nations stands with all people with autism. Benjamin's resolve to work and produce films is an example to the millions of people with disabilities worldwide. He knows that anything is possible when you dream, and if you work hard, your dreams can come true. This report was produced by Michael Wopatniuk and Flaminia Bondi for the United Nations.